Voljelo se dvoje mladih Šest mjeseci Actually, Bosnians are pretty surprised when I meet anyone from the former Yugoslavia in California. Like, I'll be at a store, mm -hmm. and I'll see by their name. Their name is, like, the woman's name is, I don't know, Yasmina or something. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the last name that it's someone from the former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And I'll say something to them, and they're like, oh, my gosh, how do you know this language? And then they have to tell me their whole life story, <laughs> how they left during the war, and how much they want to go back, and what they miss. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... Oh, okay, I need to buy this. <laughs> I need to get going. But it's really the only, sometimes the only opportunity I have yeah. to speak the language. And I understand how important it is for somebody when they're in an environment where they're only speaking a foreign language and then suddenly somebody out of the blue speaks mm. their language. Especially when you're coming from like a small language or a small culture, you know, with just, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 million people speaking the language or whatever the number is. But it's not like Spanish, it's not like French, it's not like one of those big and important languages. And languages can be divided in that way. Yeah. But it's, it, it's as if uh, when Bosnians hear somebody speaking Bosnian, it's as if they're grateful, like, oh, cool, thank you for learning our language. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really funny, because it's really rare. Yeah. I, I mean, I know. Well, you know, for some people, they don't actually try to cultivate relationships in the place where they're living. Sometimes some, it's, it's amazing. There are people from the United States who go to study Spanish in Guatemala, and they just stay in their Spanish school and hang out with other North Americans, whether or Europeans, but English speakers, and they only hang out with the English speakers. So I figure, what's the point of going all the way to Guatemala if you're just going to sit in a school yeah. and, and not talk to local people and try to make local connections. So of course it's huge um, because you learn the colloquial language and you're actually using it rather than just reading in a book. I am going Hello to... Hello Peter, hello Jane. Yes, That's how call it. that kind of stuff, yeah. And I, I mean, it's something that always I find really surprising in the United States is I hear people say, oh, I'll learn Spanish, but I have to go to a Spanish-speaking country. I'm like, you live in a Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> you're in the United States. We're not officially a Spanish-speaking country. It's not our official language, yeah. but... There are quite a few people there. <laughs> Tens of millions of people in the United States speak Spanish. You do. I learned to speak fluent Spanish without leaving the United States, so you can do it. And I think in Bosnia, even though with a lot of my Bosnian friends, I actually did speak in English when I was here. You being one of them. Yeah, she, she never, uh, it's, it's interesting because she never spoken in, in Bosnia much, apart from the lesson. But yeah. tell me how. Uh, you also told me that, that sometimes you have a particular people who only speak one language too. That's true. That's true. And that's so a, why am I uh, assigned to, to English? Why didn't you speak Japanese to me? <laughs> well, number one, neither of us speak Japanese. Well, that, and your English like is a lot better than my Bosnian. Uh -huh. So we would start with Bosnian lessons and then we would talk about something that was too complicated for me to explain in Bosnian and I would yeah. just switch yeah. to English. <laughs> it's seriously important to for Sami to distinguish languages with people and the reason is is because it helps me prevent confusing languages. So like for example Ismar who's a friend of that you introduced me to, he speaks Russian and English, but he and I never speak in Bosnian, it's always Russian or English. Um, because that way, you know, I do confuse my languages. Sometimes I'm confused even in the United States. Even though I haven't been in, in Bosnia for so many years, I sometimes am speaking in Russian and a Bosnian word comes out. Yeah. Why? Because they're both Slavic languages. Yeah. But the and there's some triggers, something that, that, that connects. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like I often I'm talking about the bus stop in Russian and it's Ustanovka, mm -hmm. but I always want to say Stanitsa. <laughs> you remember Trudna? Oh Trudna my gosh! Is, uh, because Trudna in, in <laughs> Bosnian it means pregnant. Mm -hmm. Trudna, she's pregnant actually. It's, it's, uh, feminine uh, and in, in Russian it means uh, difficult, difficult. Mm -hmm. so it's a good one yes I, I wanted to say that something was difficult for me and it was mistaken yeah. that I was trying to say I was pregnant and I wasn't pregnant I was just saying something was difficult for me so there are those words that are they're called false friends they sound similar but they mean something different 
And with Bosnian, there are some words which are very similar to, to Russian, but the emphasis is in a different part of the word. Uh -huh. So I have to be careful there. Uh, but back to the whole friends issue, I, it is important to develop a relationship with people in a language because that gives you an emotional connection to the language. Because otherwise, the language just rests in a book or TV, or it's just this academic subject. But when you have an emotional connection with a friend or a romantic partner or whatever, you are much more motivated to learn the language. But you have these you're, you have uh, these emotional connections in your brain related to certain words, related to certain songs or conversations. Mm -hmm. And you know, to learn a language, you have to give yourself up to the language. It's like you're releasing yourself from the confines of your mother tongue. For me, it's English or Russian, and and giving yourself up to the language. And in here, it's Bosnian. And what better way to give yourself up? The best way, I think, to give yourself into a language is through a personal connection with with somebody, uh -huh. uh, or with a group of people, or with music. You know, when you say that, uh, it's actually quite similar to musical phrases that sometimes in a context of practicing really structures like scales it can be really boring mm -hmm. and even if you do it a lot it just you don't memorize it uh, unless it's in the context of a song and something which is uh, which has especially if it has words to it you know? of course and Damit is a professional musician so that's why he was teaching me Bosnian through through music yeah. and uh, Damir plays Sevda music, which is traditional uh -huh. Bosnian music. Traditional Bosnian music, yeah. And the, th the thing is actually that with Sevda, because Sevda used to be, uh, it's a tradition of the music around here with a lot of influences of Turkish Ottoman music, Slavic songs, rural urban music. So it's all a, a, a one uh, mixture of, say, aesthetics and everything. Yeah. And it, it was really popular back in 50s and 60s uh, in, in former Yugoslavia. It was for a period it was almost a pop music but today uh, this entire scene of Sevdak singers back from the 60s they all went into this really awful folk foxy stuff and uh, uh, today I feel the same thing about Sevdak that you would say for a language I, I definitely needed to, to surrender to it to, 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 to really immerse myself in it in a way that's not only you know I, I know the songs I really needed to, to do a lot of apprenticeship with all the people and, uh, and it's not all, only listening to recordings it's you know meeting people and I definitely feel the difference with some singers who sing solely from records mm -hmm. when they pick up something from something from the records and when they pick up something picked up something from a living person who gave them the song and explained the meaning and they sung together because you know in terms of audio when you receive it from a CD or a, or a record or whatever audio recording is you always receive it only with your ears you know but when you receive personally from a person uh, personally from Person. Uh, from person. Yeah. Uh, you receive it with all your senses. You yeah. know, you receive it with even with vibrations that are not only coming through your ears but through the whole body. And so I totally agree actually. Uh, Learn languages. Yeah. And listen to good music. Yes. Yes. Dušmani ne da doše Kad su htjeli da se uzmu Dušmani 